A lot of people are probably unsure of the rollout of the Plaid powertrain, particularly the Tesla Roadster, the second generation one, which I saw so many people asking about after the Q1 earnings call, which I should just remind you, it's not a huge priority for them right now. Model Y, Model 3, that's their bread and butter. But either way, you guys should be up to date on the latest timeline, which of course has probably changed because of the pandemic. But the shorter answer is no, the Tesla Roadster, it's not coming in 2020. A lot of you guys probably knew this, but a lot of people didn't, so I figured putting it in one video might be helpful. Elon, via some older tweets, no, not the ones we got this morning, let's... <laughs> Let's not bring that up. But in previous tweets where he was a bit more sober, he was able to bring up what the lineup is looking like for the Plaid rollout. For those of you who don't know, the Plaid powertrain basically is a tri-motor system. Two in the back, one in the front. And Elon has alluded to it in the past as some type of alien kind of technology, as in what the Tesla team has been able to make the tri-motor setup do is quite amazing. And anytime Elon tells us about a vehicle with three motors, it always has insane range. So I think there's a very healthy balance of power efficiency somewhere in there when they do three motors instead of two because originally when they unveiled the Tesla Roadster that was the first tri-motor vehicle they showcased and boom 621 mile range and because every single Tesla that's ever been unveiled has had a better range than the prototype did I bet the Tesla Roadster will probably go even further than that then later on we got the Cybertruck which starts at 250 miles for the cheap one and then if you're willing to do dual motor it'll take you well over 300 miles but then once you make the jump to try motor you suddenly get 500 miles of range. So a lot of that probably has to do with the battery pack itself, but I think there is still, again, some type of alien technology type efficiency that you're able to achieve when you have three motors working together. So that's why I think the Model S Plaid, which we've talked about in the past, is probably going to have a range that exceeds 500 miles, or at least gets pretty close to that, because Elon brought up at the last Q1 earnings call that the current Model S that they're selling right now technically has a range of 400 miles, but just that the EPA left the door open overnight or left the key inside and that was draining power. So essentially they didn't really get to test the vehicle to its full capacity. But now the EPA came forward and said, we don't know what he's talking about. We tested it fine. So either way, you could believe Elon, you could believe the EPA. The bickering is pointless. It's basically 400 miles. When the range on the website is 391 and there's so many variables when it comes to the range of an EV, nine miles is a rounding error. So I think it's safe to say that with the current Model S, they can achieve 400 miles of range. It just depends on the right circumstances. So once you add in a tri-motor and you increase the size of the battery pack, which by the way, Model S Plaid, that's going to be a seven-seater. So rear-facing in the back probably, but that is going to be the first rollout of the tri-motor Tesla. Because of course, on the road right now, there's no official Tesla with three motors on the inside. But tweets from last year, Elon detailed that they would first release the Model S Plaid and then learn from that, see how people respond to it, see how the motor do and use some of that data that the Plaid Mode Model S is able to collect and apply that to the next generation Roadster. So this isn't an official confirmation. I'm sure Elon didn't want to bring this up because it of course reinforces the stigma of Elon time. But yeah, they want to release the Model S with the Plaid powertrain at the very end of this year. But given how everything is being delayed, it's fairly possible we won't see the Plaid Mode Model S until next year. But then once they release that, they want to start rolling out the actual revamped test. Tesla Roadster with the tri-motor and yes, that insane SpaceX package and Franz claims apparently better specs than the prototype was able to deliver on. So I don't know if that means faster than 1.9 seconds zero to 60 times, which probably has a lot more to do with the tires and the traction of the road you're on than it does the torque that the motors are actually capable of delivering. But after the Roadster, they want to bring the Model X into the Plaid powertrain. So I thought this was an important point because a lot of people thought that the Model S and X were getting the Plaid powertrains at the same time. But according to these tweets, which again, timelines can change, so this isn't set in stone, it seems like best case scenario, we get the Plaid mode Model S at the end of this year, and then early 2021, maybe mid 2021, that's when they start rolling out the revamped Tesla Roadster with its insane specs. And yeah, we'll get a lot of really fun YouTube videos, especially drag races with this thing once it comes out. And then once the Roadster is rolled out, that's when they'll bring the tri-motor set up to the Model X, which is definitely one of the more dated Teslas at this point. You know, every Tesla in the lineup has something that stands out about it, like Model 3, that is the cheapest one you can get new. The Model Y, that's kind of the best one overall with all the best features put into one package. The Model S has the best range of any EV and the Model X is, uh, you know, it looks cool because it's got those doors that go up. So 
there you have it. But it's in desperate need of an interior update, and the tri-motor will probably make the Model X, again, one of the fastest SUVs in the world, but will that many people spend that much money on a Model X? I don't know. I mean, it probably has more to do with extending the range of that vehicle, so for people in the luxury segment, they'll be able to buy a seven-seater electric car that can go well over 400 miles, because right now, it's capable of 351, but once they boost the battery pack and give it the three motors, that's when it's safe to assume, yeah, you'll have a seven-seater vehicle that can have a decent amount of cargo, but also go over 400 miles on a single charge. But I know this is upsetting. I really wanted the Tesla Roadster to come out this year. All of 2020 was supposed to be a big year for Tesla. If you've been watching me for a while, you know, I thought this was going to be the huge year for them. They had the Model Y dropping, the Roadster, and the Tesla Semi. Now it feels like half of that has all been delayed. So it's understandable given the times we're facing right now. So a lot of plans I'm sure have changed. And at the end of the day, you know, the Roadster is really fun and cool looking and stuff, but it's really doesn't make much sense for Tesla as a company to prioritize this. They should prioritize their bread and butter, the vehicles that are bringing in the most revenue because quarter two for Tesla is going to be really, really tough with the Fremont factory shut down and they still don't know when the factory is going to be up and running again. I hope it's soon, but done safely. And because of that, they got a delay some of the dream projects, the ones that we all are dying to see, but probably don't help the growth of the company that much. But either way, what are your guys' guesses on the timelines? Do you think 2021 is going to be kind of the rebound year where they can bring out everything, or is the Roadster just going to drift off into concept land? Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join my Discord, and we can chat more about it there. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.